I grew up on a farm, so you drove everything, tractors and pickup trucks, <laughs> from, you know, so that kind of stuff. I got laid off from my other job, and I just got fed up with getting laid off, so I just went around town for a whole day putting in applications. And one Saturday, I come home, and my wife at the time said that uh, somebody had been calling here all day looking for you. And so I called him back, and he just said, be here on Monday morning. <laughs> at the beginning, I was a mechanic, truck driver, loader operator, both of those, <laughs> everything, because there wasn't very many of us. We did a lot of oil field roads. At that time, you'd haul in sand and gravel for them. And then, there was like four, four of us with tandems, that was about it, and mostly the people that were doing the oil sites is the ones that you worked for, so you really didn't see nobody, just those four guys. You just try and keep up with everybody, and if there's stuff in the way, you try and get it out of the way and keep the trucks moving, you know? If you have to drop a truck to, to run the loader for a while to catch the guys up instead of loading yourself every time. It, 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 whatever can make it go faster. If it's moving with, with a dozer or making a road or pulling somebody out or whatever, you know, just keep it going. When they did the Myers, they were hauling clay in here right and left. There was like six, eight trucks at a time and they had one guy in the dozer and another dozer sitting there, so every once in a while you'd, somebody would jump out of the truck, jump in the dozer, and push the clay off. I mean, it just, you just, you try and keep the job going, you know? It don't matter what it is, if it's a grader or whatever, you just try and make it work, you know? <laughs> you just depended on each other. I mean, you, you only had so many guys, so if one guy come up missing one day, you, you had to make that up. <laughs> so you just learned how to do everything and just, like everybody could do everybody else's job at first, you know. Now it's too big to do that. I used to run the low boy, so you had to move everything. So you, pavers, cranes, whatever. You had to be able to get it on the trailer and get it off the trailer. You'd start out in the morning, they'd tell you what you were doing. You'd take a piece of equipment out to a job site or three or four, and then you'd jump the come back, dump the low boy off, grab the lead, and go back in there and do all the work, and then come back and get the low boy and pick it all up and move it to the next job. <laughs> Who would ever dream you'd be 500 yards from the Mexican border with an Elmer's truck? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> but during that Katrina stuff, we were all over the place with over-the-road stuff. Uh, a lot of guys hauled ice and water down there with uh, reefers and stuff. I got into it later on where they hauled, uh, oh, kitchen cabinets, refrigerators, uh, just all kinds of stuff. That they, there was trucks from all over the United States there doing the same thing. You had pretty much, it was pretty cool because they give you a piece of paper and you didn't have to, you had to go through the scales, but you didn't, they couldn't stop you. It was just free reign, and they couldn't do nothing to you because the government said so. So it was pretty cool. Tiring, but pretty cool. <laughs> it was a, a big deal to me because you got to do something pretty special, you know. And you just got to have patience with people. I mean, traffic is outrageous. I mean, they don't pay no attention to you at all. You got to outthink everybody. You see a car coming up to an intersection or three or four, you gotta look at each one of those and figure out what they're doing before they even do it. <laughs> you gotta have a kind of a sixth sense of what's going on, otherwise, even if something's gonna happen. Because <laughs> nowadays, cars just do not pay attention to trucks, <laughs> period. That thing can really hurt you <laughs> and I can't stop it in five feet that's the most misunderstood thing about trucks I think they just think you can go and stop right now and it doesn't happen <laughs> the, the trucks have improved yeah but 
you could do a lot more with some of them than you can other ones. The truck has to be part of you. It's just like any piece of equipment. <laughs> yeah. You tell it what to do, it's got to do it. Otherwise, you're in trouble. <laughs> Stuck, mostly. I just like trucks. <laughs> I like the power. <laughs> My name's Daryl Poff, and I drive trucks.